If there's anything that speaks to the incredible and strange time we live in, it's that in the 1980s we took the most iconic mythical creature of all time, the unicorn, and made it a reality. And then we patented it. The origins of unicorns date back millennia, and not typically to myth, but to history. Documenting new animals was much harder back then, and often relied on loose descriptions from travelers who had seen the animal from afar, or had just heard about it from a companion. This is why an early drawing of an Indian rhinoceros by German painter Albrecht Dürer shows the rhino as having amazing decorative plate armor, and a second horn on its back. Side note, when this Indian rhinoceros arrived in Portugal in 1515, it was likely the first time a rhinoceros had been in Europe since Roman times. And since then, rhinos had entered the mythos, being described in bestiaries at the time as monoceros or unicorns. One of the earliest descriptions of unicorns comes from Greek physician Stesius in the 5th century BC, who described them as as large as horses or even larger. Their bodies are white and they have a large horn about a cubit in length in their forehead. He was describing a rhinoceros. Later, philosopher Pliny the Elder would describe the unicorn as having the body of a horse and the head of a stag. This formed up the coming notion of the unicorn being a horse rather than a massive hulking rhinoceros. The modern idea of the unicorn as a romantic symbol would emerge in the 7th century AD in the writings of scholar Isidore of Seville, who claimed that, quote, the unicorn is too strong to be caught by hunters, except by a trick. If a virgin girl is placed in front of the unicorn and she bears her breast to it, all fierceness will cease, and it will lay its head on her bosom, and thus quieted is easily caught. Hagrid, what is that? What we're here for. See that? That's unicorn blood, that is. With unicorns now so ingrained in fantastical lore, magic, and romance, and the actual unicorn not being particularly fantastical, magical, or romantic, there was only one possible solution. We had to make unicorns. Jesus Christ! Did you see that unicorn? Its horn was so shiny. Aside from tying false horns onto ponies, or I guess, Cats, the first successful attempt at creating a real unicorn, happened in the 20th century in London. According to Pulitzer Prize winner Odell Shepard in his book The Lore of the Unicorn, a Napoli's one-horned sheep was presented to the Prince of Wales in London's Zoological Gardens in 1906. There are reports that suggest that these unicorn sheep had been popular in Nepal for some time, but this was the first live specimen shown outside the country. Odell writes that the unicorn sheep wasn't a newly discovered breed of one-horned sheep, but rather a creation of man. By, quote, certain maltreatment, ordinary two-horned sheep are converted. This idea of converting a two-horned animal into a unicorn would resurface again in the 1930s in Maine. The man responsible was biologist Dr. William Franklin Dove. He had heard the stories of the Naples goats and wanted to understand how it was done. When a calf is born, its horns, or buds at that stage, aren't attached to its skull. They're attached to its skin. They later take root in the skull after a few weeks of development. Dove realized that because the buds weren't locked into the bone, he could easily surgically move them around, placing both buds next to each other so that when they grow, they would fuse together into a single horn. Dove created unicorn goats, unicorn rams, and even a massive 1,500-pound unicorn bull. Which I guess is sort of getting away from the romantic notion of unicorns to begin with. Though a side effect of the surgery was the bull's temperament was much gentler, like a unicorn. A really ugly unicorn. Let's fast forward to the 1970s. This is O'Baron Zell Ravenheart, a self-proclaimed wizard and the head of the Grey School of Wizardry, and in the mid-1970s he started work on making his own unicorns. Having taken biology and pre-med in university, he based his unicorns heavily on the work Dr. Dove had done in the 1930s. He started by breeding angora goats with sonning goats for their longer legs, and then he performed the same operation Dove had done on baby goats, and by 1980 he had a whole blessing of unicorns. Which is what the internet tells me is the correct word for a group of unicorns. The result was an actual unicorn. Well, a goat unicorn, but close enough. Ugly one-horned mule. It wasn't in pain or anything, and its horns would grow naturally, as it was just its two regular horns growing together. In 1984, Ravenheart signed a deal with the Ringling Bros, a popular animal cruelty troupe, sorry, animal circus troupe, which would take the unicorns on tour for four years, advertised as the living unicorn. 
For 115 years, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus has brought you the most unusual attractions ever seen. Jumbo, Gargantua the Great, the world's smallest man, the greatest wild animal trainer. Now, the greatest show on earth brings you the sensation of the ages, the living unicorn. Seeing is believing at Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Both the Humane Society and the ASPCA tried to dissuade people from partaking in what they were certain was animal cruelty. But when the United States Department of Agriculture sent veterinarians to inspect and x-ray the unicorns, they found that they were just healthy goats that had had their horns surgically altered at birth. Part of Ravenheart's contract forbade him from discussing the specifics of how he created the unicorns, but that didn't stop him from patenting the process in 1984. It reads like this. The unicorn, both in mythology and history, possesses a unique reputation as being a fearless, courageous, and beautiful animal and protector of other beasts. One theory explains the origination of the unicorn as being developed by herd keepers for protecting the herd. Other theories attribute various magical powers to the horn of the unicorn. In any event, the unicorn appears in many early drawings and then seems to have ceased to exist to the extent that for many centuries it was hard to distinguish whether or not the unicorn had actually existed or whether it was a product of man's imagination. Just cutting in, it was the second thing. Back to Ravenheart. It is the purpose of the present invention to provide an improved method of forming a unicorned animal, having what is thought to be a higher mental capacity and greater physical capabilities. There is little more demystifying or telling of the time that we live in than a patent outlining how to create the most iconic magical creature of all time, the unicorn. I should mention that O'Baron Zell Ravenheart wasn't the only one making unicorns around that time. Famed drug lord Pablo Escobar, featured in the Netflix series Narcos, reportedly made one for his daughter by stapling a cone to a horse's head and paper wings to its back. It died of infection. What do you guys want me to talk about in my next video? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, be sure to click right on my face to subscribe, or at least think about it. Do you speak the language? They express only love and laughter. Dark thoughts are unknown to them.